Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Um, well, back at verse 20, 22. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he, he threatened not, but he committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, we, we've talked about this numerous times before. We'll talk about it again tonight. Uh, in discussing healing, healing belongs to us through Jesus Christ. Healing is ours because Jesus bore it on the cross. We reference this back over to Isaiah chapter 53 where this, this is the uh, quote of the Old Testament prophecy, Peter quoting it in uh, reference to fulfilled prophecy. In other words, it's no longer a, a prophetical statement of, of a coming event, but it is a declaration of the fulfillment of that event. Thus, it is now a fulfilled prophecy. Glory to God. So Isaiah 53, um, God speaking through Isaiah. He says, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as that were our faces from him, we he was despised and rejected uh, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Now back there, the word sorrow is a sickness. And the word grief is, is, um, is pains. And surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. This is the prophecy of Isaiah of Jesus at the cross. Jesus becoming sin for us. Jesus taking our sin. Jesus taking our sicknesses. He became, death, he became sin and sickness for us. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Again, we see uh, forgiveness and uh, healing going hand in hand. Isaiah 53 prophesies that Jesus would not only forgive us and heal us, he would bear our sicknesses. He bore our sicknesses. He bore our sins. Uh, James uh, epistle to the church. He writes to the church in um, the um, fifth chapter. And he says here is there, in verse 13, is there any afflicted among you? Let him pray. Is there any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and pray over them. Uh, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall say, really, it should be healed. That, that word is sozo um, because he's talking about the sick. So that he shall heal the sick. You know, translate it that way. The word translate, make whole, heal, save. And so that, that word sozo there uh, in the Greek, and, so, and, and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he's committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Again, we see forgiveness of sin, healing, uh, healing of sickness is going hand in hand throughout Scripture. Why? Because the same sacrifice was given in order to cover mankind in those arenas. It was Jesus who bore our sin. It was Jesus who bore our sicknesses. Hallelujah. And uh, in reference back to 1 Peter 2, 24 and Isaiah 53, we run, run once again, not one once again, we, we run once again over to Matthew's gospel, uh, the eighth chapter. And it says in verse 16, when the evening was come, there were brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. So that's a Greek form of Isaiah. The prophet himself, saying himself, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Here uh, we have Peter. 
We have James, we have the Psalms, we have Isaiah, we have the Gospels, we have Matthew, all declaring that Jesus bore our sicknesses and our sins at the same time. So he is the bearer of our sin, and 99.99.999999% of the church will agree that Jesus bore our sin. Jesus is the sin bearer, but he's also the sickness bearer. And these scriptures bear that out. At the very same time that he took our sin, he took our sicknesses. At the same time he became sin for us, he became sickness for us. And so he did that so that we might be made whole. We might be made well. And so we have, to, we have a basis of faith to believe that he wants us as well, just as much wants us well as he does forgiven. Okay, our basis of faith is the very same scriptures we can look to for, for spiritual salvation, to be saved, to be born again, we can look to for physical health and healing in our bodies. These same, exact same passages of scripture can be used in either one because they cover both of them. And the reason they cover both of them, the sacrifice given for them or the, was the same sacrifice. Jesus was the sin bearer. Jesus was the sickness bearer. For on our behalf, glory to God. Therefore, by, in, in, in a realm of believing God and expressing and exercising faith, we can go to these same scriptures and win just as much confidence that if we confess our sins, he forgives us and redeems us, that we can, can, we can confess he's our healer and be healed in our bodies. Okay? So we have a, a biblical basis of faith to stand firm and to stand strong. Just as strong of argument that God wants to save humanity is the, the argument that God wants to heal humanity of physical ailments and diseases. Glory to God. And so it's right there in the same passages of scripture. Um, <clears throat> glory to God. I believe Malachi, um, let me go over there. Or if you're Italian, the prophet Malachi. Some people like, you know, the, our Italian members like to call him the prophet Malachi. Hallelujah. I guess if you were in Italy, they, they probably would call it Malachi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, it's not in that verse. It's not in that chapter. All right. Well. It says that the son of righteousness shall rise, arise with healing in his wings. And, um, and I'm trying to find that. But it's, it's in the Bible. <laughs> and I didn't bring my iPad out here. I can't believe I did because I could have looked it up then real quick. Uh, verse, chapter 4, verse 2. I knew, I thought that was a 2. I was looking in the wrong place. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. You shall tread down the wicked, and they, for they shall be ashes under your soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. But look here, it says that the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. The Lord is our healer. We can trust Jesus to be our healer. Part of the ministry of Jesus, he went around about their villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's part of his ministry. You know, then over and over and over again, we see in the ministry of Jesus, 32 accounts of of 19 different healings, 32 accounts in the Gospels of healing Jesus had in his ministry, 19 are more different. So we have 13 repetitious accounts, but we have 19 different healings in the Gospel. 12 of them, God, Jesus gave credit to the faith of the people throughout there. He said, the woman, woman with the issue of blood, thy faith has made thee whole. The woman, the, the woman whose daughter was grievously vexed of a devil, you go, your faith, your faith has saved her. Um, the centurion, I have not found so great a faith all, in all of Israel. Over and over and over again, we find throughout the Bible that faith, and there's a basis for faith. The basis for faith um, goes even all the way back to, look into John's gospel, the third chapter. If we look into John chapter 3, in verse 14, it says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so, we must, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, we always quote John three sixteen, but we forget John 3, 3, 14 and 15. Now, back over in Numbers, I believe it is, uh, around, um, oh, chapter 9, you know, tw or chapter 21, we can look and find um, the story of the, of the serpents. And the story was simply this, that the children of Israel had disobeyed God, and the fiery serpents would come out and bite them, and the people began to cry out because they were dying from the, from the, the venomous snake bites. God said, make a, bra a, bra a brazen serpent, put it on a pole, and when the people look on it, they live. And it was a type of Jesus. 
That serpent on the, being on the staff was a type of Jesus on the cross becoming sin for us. But notice, even under the old covenant, that type healed their bodies. They were delivered from dying from the serpent bites by looking at the, at the serpent on the, on the staff, and they were healed in their body. And back over in Numbers, when the, when the brazen serpents and the fire serpents would come out and the brazen serpent was put up, that was a type of Jesus at the cross, meaning this. Jesus was a sin bearer, but you could also look to him and be healed. And even if you look on the rescue squads now, you'll see the, the staff with the snake on it. That's where it came from. came from the Bible. came right out of that story. You know, they, they, you know people say, well, they don't believe in that kind of thing. And their very emblem of medicine is the staff with a serpent on it. <laughs> because you could look to Jesus and be healed. And so healing was provided for through Jesus Christ, through the work of Jesus Christ. He bore our sicknesses. He bore our sin. He is the sin bearer. He is the sickness bearer. And again, the very basis of faith that we have for salvation, those scriptures are the very same scriptures we can use as a basis of faith for healing. All right, so they can look there. So Jesus is the healer. He even says and gives that the type that Moses' serpent was a type of him. Just as, you, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now on the, on the spiritual side, you get born again. On the physical side, you can be healed by looking at Jesus. Looking unto Jesus and you can be made every whit whole. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we have here... Numerous scriptures, and we, we could just go on this, this, you know, throughout the Bible. There's more scriptures here and more scriptures there. Um, you know, James saying, called for the elders of the church, Peter quoting and declaring the fulfillment of prophecy. A Psalm declaring that it's a benefit of God, that healing is a benefit of God. We know from even the Greek and Hebrew words that refer to salvation and saving. Um, as, as we said, you've, you've been here when we've taught this before, that the Greek verb is where we get the meaning of words in the Greek Opposite in English, we go to the noun to get a meaning of the word. For, so a verb gets it. Understand, we understand the meaning of a verb from the noun. In the Greek, it's opposite. We understand the meaning of a noun from the verb. And so in Greek, we have what is referred to as the sozo word group. And that includes the noun soterius. So you have sozo is the verb. Soterius, salvation, is the noun. But it comes out of the sozo word group. And so therefore the meaning of salvation is derived from the verb. And so the verb sozo carries the meaning of saving, of healing, of being made whole, of deliverance and, pers and, and preservation. That's all included in that sozo word group or the word sozo. So when we look at the very word, you know, that, you know, Jesus, you know, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be sozo. And so they can be healed. They can be saved. They can be preserved. They can be made whole. That word entails those meanings and understandings. So the, even the Greek word used in the salvation of man, that sozo word group, carries with it the implication that God wants you healed and made whole in your body. Hallelujah. So we have a scriptural, ba a scriptural basis for everything we're believing. If we want to be well, we have a scriptural foundation to look to. And by feeding on the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, and understanding the Word of God, and letting revelation come out of the Word of God, faith cometh by hearing, Romans chapter 10, and hearing by the Word of God. Or actually hearing, uh, faith accompanies, cometh accompanies the Word of God. Faith comes with it. So when you're hearing the Word of God and you're meditating on the Word of God, faith is accompanying that word to be planted in your heart so you can act on it and, and let it work in your life. And so that's why we need to make sure we meditate the word, we feed on the word, we listen to the word. Remember um, uh, the, the woman with the issue of blood. Now there was a certain woman who had an issue of blood 12 years and was not, and, and saw, did, um, I can't even think of the word. You know, something many physicians, <laughs> oh gosh. I went totally blank on how it went. Okay, there was a certain woman with the issue of blood um, 12 years, and uh, suffered many things, there we go, had suffered many things of many physicians, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, well, who's Jesus? Jesus is the word. So when she heard, she heard of the word, she heard the word, and it was simply this, she had to have heard, if you'll study the Bible, she's not the only person that touched his garment. The Bible says people touched his garment and were made whole. And so um, she had to have heard that people touched Jesus' clothes and got healed. Because she began to say, if I can touch his clothes, I'll be whole. So a certain woman, which had initial blood 12 years, suffered many things and many physicians, was nothing better, uh, but rather grew worse. She spent all she had on those physicians. But when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind him and touched his clothes. And Jesus immediately, knowing virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched me? 
But the master, but the disciples turned to Jesus and said, Master, thou seest the multitude throng of thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? But the woman, fearing and trembling, came down, fell before him, and told him all the truth. And Jesus said, Woman, thy faith is great as thy faith be, uh, uh, according to that. No. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go and be whole of thy plague. Jesus knew virtue went out of him. She was made whole because she believed it. But something, something that started this whole thing, or something that kick-started this whole thing, was not that Jesus was in town, but was that she heard of Jesus. She heard a word. Just like Abraham, the Bible says that Abraham, um, his faith was accounted as, as righteousness because he said this, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So he took the word, fed on the word, received the word, and acted on the word. And so we have to take the word, receive the word, act on the word, and get the results of the word. And that's by meditating on it and feeding on it and looking to it and coming convinced. And the Bible says that, you know, um, Abraham being fully persuaded that what he promised he was able also to perform. Not partially persuaded. You know, I, I, I like to use that old song, that old country song. You know, he was, you know, I was almost persuaded to let strange lips take me home. Well, you, thank God you weren't fully persuaded because you'd been in trouble if you had. You know, almost persuaded is not bad enough, but you're fully persuaded to get you in trouble. In that case, but on the other side, fully persuaded with the word of God to get you healed. Fully persuaded with the word of God to get you prosperous. Fully persuaded to get you de delivered, praise God. Amen. So we want to be fully persuaded by the word of God. And that comes from, receiving it with full assurance that what he promised he was able to perform. So we have to look at the word of God and take it at its face value that it means what it, what it says. And so even though our body says one thing, even though symptoms say one thing, even though circumstances say another, the Bible says Abraham was under, uh, look over Romans 4. Uh, Verse, we start in verse 16, therefore it is, verse 16, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but also to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead, and calls those things which be not as though they were. Remember, we said before, Weymouth translation says, who makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Again, Weymouth says here, who against hope believed in hope, who under utterly hopeless circumstances hopefully believed. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So now we have a hope that has a foundation and a reason to be able to, to have hope. He's not just a wishing and a prayer. He's just not wishing, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Not wishing he had won the lottery last night. You know, you, you can sit around dreaming about the lottery. You know, boy, if I won the lottery and got $80 million paid out cash, I'd do this and I'd do that. That's just a wish. Why? Wow. There's no basis for faith to believe you're going to win the lottery. Okay? It is a game of chance. You know, you put it in the numbers and, you know, you play the numbers and if your number dials up, you win. Okay? <clears throat> but you have no, but there's not even a hope. There's not even a real Bible hope. There's not a Bible hope there. You're wishing. Okay. And, and, the, and the hundreds of thousands of people who play and don't get anything, they, they wish twinkle, twinkle, little star high. I wonder what you are, <laughs> you know, and uh, they didn't get anything. But the Bible here, who against hope believes in hope or who under utterly hopeless circumstances hopefully believe that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. See, the word of God produces a hope in us. It, 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 it is the light of hope that when we don't have any hope, there's an answer that, we, that God has an answer. And God's answer is it will, will deliver us, and God's answer will produce in us what God wants to have in us. So a, before Abraham got into faith, he hopefully believed under utterly hopeful circumstances. Why? Because God had given him a word, and that word is what put, brought hope to him. Well, why is hope so important? Well, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. See, we got a lot of people who know how to use the faith, don't have any hope. So you got to have hope that what, you know, that, that, so hope springs, you know, faith comes by hearing, but I'm telling you, hope springs out of the word. Hope comes from, you know, uh, here it says, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body and uh, 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 now dead, which was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Next verse. And being fully persuaded. See, there you go. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Not only did God promise it. Now, that's one thing if I come up to you tonight, uh, Joe, and I say, listen, Joe, um, I'm going to give you $500,000. I promise you I'm going to give you $500,000. Well, it don't do any good if I can't perform it. I can promise it all day long. And see here it says, you know, that he, he staggered not, that he was fully persuaded that what he was promised, he was also able to perform. And I think a lot of times we fall short because we, we, uh, we look at something and say, oh, I just wish that were true, but we really don't, and we're not fully persuaded that God can perform what he said he would do because we begin to look at the circumstances bigger than the power of God to deliver us and to bring us out, to manifest his power, to manifest his goodness, to manifest his glory. But yet God is God. And God is able, he is the creator of the universe. And so God spoke to Abraham in an utterly hopeless circumstance. Hundred-year-old men don't father children, and 90-year-old women don't bear them. All right? There you go. I mean, even if the 100-year-old man could father the child, the 90-year-old woman who ceased to be with her after the manner of women couldn't bear it. As we said before, prune wound Sarah. All right? I mean, she ceased to be with her. She, basically, she'd gone through menopause, and there was nothing left in her body to produce. There was, I, I, actually, I believe it was more of a miracle in Sarah than it was in Abraham. <laughs> Glory to God for her to have a child. She couldn't have been artificially inseminated. Okay? I mean, she's old. It's dried up. Ain't nothing working. She's an old woman. But yet she's, she, she shows up a year later walking through the city streets with a baby. <laughs> At first in her belly. You know there had been some talk going on. Don't you know? I mean, she went all her life and couldn't bear children. What? Under utterly hopeless circumstance. A circumstance that was beyond any type of reasonable human hope, beyond any, I mean, just any kind of hope. It was an utterly hopeless circumstance. But he hopefully believed, why? Because he had a word. And see, that word produced a hope in him that he could lay hold of in faith. Hallelujah. See, that's why it's important to find scriptures that cover what you're, you're dealing with. A lot of us believe God can, that God even will, but we got to know what it is God will do. And that's where the, the scriptures will produce a hope in us for our faith to lay hold of. We've come to know God many times, and, know, and we know our Father. We know he's a good God. He wants to, he'll do things for us. That's why you've got to find a scripture so there's a hope. Your circ, you can't, because your circumstance can look hopeless. Your circumstance can be the one that can't anybody fix. Your circumstance can be the one that just nothing else is going to happen. But then you go get a scripture, and hope arises. And your faith lay holds it, lays hold of it and brings it to pass. Glory to God. That's why I started out with those scriptures earlier talking about the, the different things where uh, healing and, forget, and, and um, sick, being healed of sicknesses go hand in hand because we have so much confidence in the saving power of God. We're walking in our salvation every day. We're walking in the fact that, that Jesus is our Lord. We're walking in the fact that one day he's going to come back and take the church away, you know, and, and, and we'll go live in heaven for a thousand years, come back and reign on the earth, praise God. Then it'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And what's going to happen after that, I don't really know because we don't really have the scripture to cover it. But I don't guess God's going to create a new earth just so we can, just so we can all sit in heaven. That's my guess. I would guess we're going to be coming back down here and doing some stuff down here. You know? Um, void of all the evil. Glory to God. I guess the lion and the lamb will lay down together. Hallelujah. Praise God. You'll be able to go out in the, go out in the woods and not be concerned about a pack of hyenas getting you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We might, we might have, we might find Atlantis. <laughs> the new earth might re recover Atlantis and go visit Atlantis. Now, I'm not talking about the one out there in the, Bahamas, in the Bahamas right now. Of course, I like visiting there too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. But you know, we're here, the whole thing is this, those scriptures, when we're under utterly hopeless circumstances, and we've all, been, we, I believe we've all been some type of utterly hopeless circumstance, financially, physically, mentally, uh, you know, relationships, different types of areas of life, that there's a word and there's a scripture that covers it. If we'll take a hold of that, God can turn that thing around because we, we laid hold by faith. And of course, we're talking about healing tonight, so we can lay hold of our healing by faith and receive from the Lord and be healed in our bodies from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. How? By 
receiving the word that was spoken. And see, he's already spoken a word over us. By his stripes, we were healed. By his stripes, you, you know, you are healed. The prophecy. Jesus demonstrated and made, made it clear. It was talking about, I believe that the reason they, that, 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 that Matthew put that scripture with that act and that event, we don't have any other way else in the gospel. That on that night, it said that it might be fulfilled by that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses was so that no one could come along later and say it was talking about spiritual diseases. See, God's smarter than the devil. And he knows the argument he's going to give people. So you get people, they come along, well, you know, uh, when Isaiah 53 is talking about he healed us spiritually. That's not what it said in Matthew 8. They were physically healed and devils cast out and did it fulfill Isaiah's prophecy. And then Peter quotes it, and he quotes it in, in you know, who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Talking about sin. See, the sin was dealt with. But then it says, by whose stripes you were healed. So separate thing. Well, it covers the second part of Isaiah's prophecy. By his stripes, we were healed. So now we have a, we have a scriptural basis. We can, we can stand up and have hope arise, even under utterly hopeless circumstances, and say, by his stripes, I was healed. 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 And under that utterly hopeless circumstances, take that word, act on that word, receive that word, let it work in us and cause us to be made whole in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, that's enough faith for you, isn't it? Amen? We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.